Yeah, we definitely have smoke from under there again. Yes, you heard that correctly. I said again, as in for the second time. I didn't catch the first motor smoke out on video, but as you can see in this picture, here's how clean and white and shiny it looked when I got started, and here's how smoked out it looked under the cover. When I smoked out the first one, it didn't actually blow my breaker because of a little wiring difference I'll show you here in a moment. So this one smoked for quite a bit longer before I shut it off and, and definitely had a little bit more smoke out. But yes, I've gone through two different motors. Let's talk about how that happened why it happened and try to prevent that from happening to you. Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop. After watching that intro, you are probably wondering how I managed to smoke not one, but two of these pretty significantly good sized motors. And we're definitely going to get into the details of that here in just a moment. We'll break down the wiring diagram and talk about what went wrong. First, I just want you to see the machine that this is on. It's on this Grizzly 5963, which is a 6x12 surface grinder. That's what these motors are operating on. Also, just want to point out that I don't have any issue with the quality of these Grizzly products. The fact that uh, I smoked out two of these motors, or I consider it a fault with the instructions, I'll get into that here in just a moment, and not the quality of the equipment itself. If I had plugged these in on 115 as they were designed, no reason to believe they wouldn't have run for a significant amount of time as they are supposed to. And uh, I got caught up in the instructions and that aspect of it wired it. The first one thought, hey, maybe it was just a bad motor. When the second one came, wired it up exactly the same, and that's why I went through two of them. At this point, I believe I figured out the problem, and uh, I am hoping to save you the headache and the pain of what I have gone through to get this thing running. So all of that said, at Grizzly, their customer service and their warranty department has been great. Uh, no issue warranting out the first motor. You know, we had a discussion between the instructions and whose fault it was on the second one. We came to a good agreement on that, so I think everybody's happy with the with that as well. So again, no complaints with their customer service department. Hey, if you're new to the channel and you like the video, appreciate it if you'd give a like or a comment on there and help support the channel. Also, encourage you to go and check out some of the other videos on the Blades to Be channel. And if you like what you see, again, hit that subscribe button and would love it if you would support the channel. With that, let's go ahead and jump into the wiring diagram and talk about what went wrong smoking out two of these motors. Let's take a look. All right, so let's get into the detail of how I managed to smoke these two motors. As I mentioned, no issue with Grizzly. No reason to believe these aren't good motors they are sending me. I haven't managed to run one longer than 90 seconds to confirm that, but I have confirmed that the issue is in the wiring. So my issue with that is in their instructions that they provide with this. I got sucked into some wording in the instructions instead of just 100% paying attention to the wiring diagram that it came with. But to be fair, Grizzly does say any conversion must be performed by a qualified electrician. I am not a certified qualified electrician. However, I do think I'm pretty good at following instructions. I have done some complex wiring before, and here's where I got sucked in. I got sucked into this statement right here of note, all wire connections remain the same between 115 volt and 230 volt. The rest of the instructions are really, really simple to follow. If you take a look at the 115 wiring diagram to 230, you also will notice that all wire connections remain the same. You can see that K1 and K2 are in the same place on 115 that they are over here. The capacitor wires are in the same place over here. And all you have to do is move the two jumpers. So you're going to take these two jumpers, take them off, and you're going to put one jumper in place across V1 to U2. And that's it. I spent most of my time focused on these jumpers and I did not pay attention to the wires. And that's where I got lost. If you're an electrician watching this, this is going to be laughable. Heck, now that I know exactly what I've done wrong and I can see the picture, I'm laughing at myself for doing this. But when you're not an electrician and you follow the instructions, you think you're doing the right thing. So let's take a look at where this really failed in these instructions and what happened. So motor number one showed up and the issue is that they are not sending the motors from the factory wired exactly like the wiring diagram. So in this case, you see these two capacitor wires. They actually have them going across U1 and Z2 instead of V1 and Z2, which since there's a jumper in place right here, technically puts it on either end of the jumper. So it does work. But if you're going to rewire it, you then have to make sure you're going to move this wire after you move the jumper. Same thing. They've got K1 and K2, which are out here at Z1 and U1, and they're putting K1 and K2 at Z1 and V1 instead. Since there's a jumper, again, it can technically be on either end of the jumper, but once you move the jumper, you're going to have to move that wire to match it up. Not only that, but they actually have K1 and K2 reversed. 
Now, again, I'm not an electrician, but in the 115 mode, one of those should be common, one of those should be hot. So technically, I think this means in the 115 that you're actually switching and splitting the common wire instead of the hot wire as you probably should. But again, I'm not an electrician expert, so can't confirm that. But bottom line is once I move the jumper, I am now sending power across this direction, which Obviously, it has no business going over here, and that's where I smoked the motor. The capacitor, you know, I wasn't running the capacitor the right way in 230 mode either. This one didn't trip the breaker when it smoked out. All the smoke was coming up out of the hole out here at the bottom, and it probably smoked for about five or six seconds before I caught it and went and shut it off. When I called Grizzly, the warranty department was really good about it. I did tell them that I had converted this over to 230 volt, told them I moved a jumper. They weren't concerned about it at all. That didn't raise any flags for them. And bottom line, we just thought, hey, this was a bad motor. First, we thought maybe there was some oil had leaked down in here, and that's what was smoking. They asked me to turn it on again. More puffs of smoke, a little flame shot out of there. So confirmed it was a bad motor. They sent me a new one under warranty, and everybody just thought, hey, I got dead on arrival, got a bad motor. Second motor arrives, and you'll notice that this one doesn't come with K2 and K1 attached because it's a new motor and you're taking those off your machine. Capacitor wires were in the correct location on this one. So you can see they've got the capacitor wires going in the right place. Same jumpers on here. Because I left all wire connections the same and because we just thought it was a bad motor on the first one, I put K1 and K2 exactly where they were before and caused the exact same problem. Only in this case, because this capacitor wires were correct, this is the one that did trip the breaker. It's what you saw at the beginning of the video, and it smoked this motor out the same way. So you can't follow this instruction where it says all wire connections remain the same. That only works if the motor comes wired from the factory correctly, and if you put the wires in the right place for K1 and K2. Just on a side note, when I first called Grizzly, they talked about a set of points being inside this motor, that centrifugal switch, but this motor does not have that. This is what's called a permanent split capacitor induction motor. It uses the, the same start capacitor, run capacitor. It does both, and it just has its own start winding inside, and I'm pretty sure that that is what I smoked since I still had a primary and secondary winding. I could still get an ohm reading through those, so that is what I ruined inside. I took it all apart thinking maybe I could get in there and just put a new set of points or fix something, but that's not the case. I had pieces of copper falling out, and again, I'm pretty sure it was this start winding is what I smoked out on both of these motors. All right, well, now that we've talked through my mistake and what I did on this, let's go head back down to the shop, and I will show you the proper way to get one of these wired up. We'll take a look at the real device, get it wired properly, get it running on 230, and then we'll call it a wrap for this video. All right, so there's what's under the cover. So we're in 115 mode. We've got a jumper over here. We've got a jumper across the bottom, jumper across the top, and we've got our switch wires switched across here. This one is wired correctly. We're gonna put our K1 and our K2 wires are gonna go across the two ends here. You can see where the wires go for the switching. So we're gonna put those in place, but we're also gonna move and set up our jumper. So we're gonna remove this jumper and this one, and we're gonna put a jumper across here to get this wired for 230. So let's go ahead and get that done, and then I'll talk about where I'm gonna put K1 and K2 before I screw those in place. When it comes wired properly from the factory, this is really it. You remove the two jumpers off the two sides, place one of them across the middle in the new position, and that really should be all there is to this whole wiring job. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure we get this wired up with K2 over here on Z1 and K1 on U1, which is gonna be Z1 back here. So K2 is gonna go back over here and K1 is gonna go over on this end. That will get us what we need to and we'll be wired for 230 volts. Let's get them plugged in. Be just about ready to turn this on. So if you're not wiring in a new motor like I am here, but you're just making an adjustment on the existing one, then you may not have to move these wires, but this is what tripped me up. Mine did not come in the correct position, so I did have to put these in the right position. And then for this ground wire, I'm just rewiring that back to the case in its original position as well. All right, that should be it. We've got K2 in place, K1 in place. I've got the ground wire around here on the back. There's a little rubber gasket. I made sure it was underneath that, has good contact with the housing. We've got our jumper in place for 230 volt. Our capacitor wires going across the right direction. It's my third time doing this. 
feeling pretty good that I have got this wired up right this time around. Let's go ahead and get our cover back in place. Well, there it is. Our motor swap is complete. We've got our new one in place. It's wired, tightened up. Guard is on. Now, be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous about plugging this in and checking my wiring out this time around, but third time's a charm. Let's go ahead and plug this in and see how it goes. We've got power contact lights over there. So we've got it plugged in. Got white light came on, so that looks good. All right, it's time for contact. Let's see how we did. So far, so good. Started, it ran. I am not feeling any heat of any kind. I think last time it was getting a little hot. I hadn't noticed that. All right, start up number two is where I've had my problems. Same thing, not getting, all right, I'm not getting any heat whatsoever. If anything, I can feel a little bit of heat from the, the bearings up here at the front, and I can just feel that the housing's got some temperature. The rest of it feels great. That's two times starting up. Well, YouTube, that's a wrap on another video here in the Blades to Be shop as we went through and finally got this Grizzly 5963 surface grinder wired up correctly. As I said, going from 115 volt to 230 volt should not be that hard. I hope you never smoke out two motors like I did on here. But also, if you have one of these and you're about to wire yours up and it doesn't come from the factory wired up exactly like the picture, I hope you found this in time to save yourself the headache and the heartache and the... Uh, the four to five weeks of waiting on parts that I did. So hopefully this saved you some time. And if nothing else, I'm sure you were entertained by watching me uh, make a screw up that, you know, once you figure it out, it's probably pretty easy to not make in the future. Hey, if you like the video, if you like the channel, drop a like or a comment on here. If this is the first video you found, I'd encourage you to watch some other videos on the channel. And if you like them, would love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and support the Blades to Be channel as we continue to grow in 2022. Till next time, I hope you're out in your own shop working on a project of your own, making some chips of your own. I'll be here in the Blades to Be shop working on another project, working on that next video. Until I get that one out for you, y'all take care.